I actually decided to coordinate again this year. Um, it's my second year coordinating at for Modern. Um, the reason why I decided to come back and actually, well, apply to come back um, was to share my passion um, with Yan. My own choreo and to have a personal expression and just try to have fun overall. I am coordinating this year because I love PCN when I, I did it my first year as a dancer and then my second year I was coordinating Mindanao and I love seeing like my choreography put on stage by people who work so hard to try to make it look good and to see something you're proud of on stage is like a feeling that I like really like and hope that the dancers that I coordinate feel also. I've been dancing all my life and I just love to dance. So um, when I heard that there was a modern suite, um, that was obviously like the one that kind of hooked me in the most. When I heard that uh, there was a modern suite and that I already knew some of the choreographers for the uh, entire suite, it drew my attention more. And also because I haven't been dancing as of late, um, I saw this as an opportunity to uh, to get back into dancing and to find my love for it again. So this is definitely helping me with that. Hi, I'm Justine Vita. Um, I'm coordinating the Maria Clara Suite this year, and I'm coordinating because for the past years, PACN has given me so much and connected me to my culture, and I would like to do the same for others. Hi, I'm Avril. I'm also a coordinator for Maria Clara. And why I wanna why I wanted to be a coordinator was because also like Justine that PACN has given me so much in the past and I want to give back as a leader and hopefully pass on my knowledge to those that are starting PACN and uh, just uh, learning about their culture as well. Cool. So the Maria Clara suite was developed after the Spanish regime in the Philippines. Um, it was influenced by like the Spanish colonization and life under their rule. It was named after Maria Clara, a character in Jose Rizal's famous novel. Uh, and a few traits about Maria Clara herself. She uh, represented nobility, was very graceful. Um, and uh, the, the, those that are in the dance, usually the men wear the wrong uh, Tagalog, and the, the women usually wear skirts, uh, usually black or uh, different colors, and plain white tops. and. Um, different sashes or uh, like different colors as well, based on the dance. So uh, one of our dances is Carniosa, and that's a more flirty dance where the male is trying to uh, woo or trying to court the woman um, in this dance. Usually um, some significant parts of the dance include a fan or a handkerchief, and some traditional um, dance moves would be like the peekaboo or the chase. And then for our other dance in our suite, we're doing Sa'ad. Sa'ad was based on a tale from a rural part of the Philippines. It was about this man named Indo. He was in love with this woman named Anna. And um, to win her heart, he tried to help out um, Anna's family, whether it was like helping out on the farm and doing any of the extra chores and um, daily things they needed to do. And the sad thing is, is that the night before their wedding, Anna eloped with someone else and left him at the altar, and that's what Sa'ad depicts. Um, personally for me, I chose the Cornelius Freeman because of my parents, shout out to my parents, um, they inspired me to spread the sport and martial art to everybody. I wanted to coordinate the Screamo because I um, do martial arts with Taekwondo. The Screamo is also known as Kali or Arnie. And it's also the um, Philippine national sport and martial art. The focus is on um, stick fighting and on arm combat. PCN is important to me because as a Filipino Um, so, Cordillera is a region in the Philippines, the northern region. Uh, it is the area that's very mountainous, uh, hence the name Cordillera, which derives from the Spanish term of rope. Um, in the Cordillera region, that's home to most of the indigenous people of the Philippines, where there are a lot of tribes and they're very in touch with their culture, and the traditions of culture is passed down and taken very seriously. 
and uh, the costumes that actually come from the Cordillera Suite are consisted of warm colors, suggesting that they're kind of closer to the sun, and they have more rustic clothing. You can see the loincloths that they wear, also known as bahags. Often they're fighting or they're bringing pots up to the wedding ceremony, so it really shows how strong the indigenous people of the Philippines are, especially in such active dances, like the the more masculine of the dances is actually very active and requires a lot of physical strength. So, so my dance is called Banga, and it's about the strong indigenous women bringing the pots up to the wedding ceremony, and it consists of a lead dancer carrying a giant stack of pots. It's usually eight, but we actually have five right now, which is actually very good. And they're demonstrating their grace and strength by carrying the water from the river to the wedding ceremony but while being assisted by another person. So. And then the dance that I'm coordinating is called Putong. Uh, it's actually a dance of, it's a celebrating dance of a successful headhunt in which the headhunters or mingers uh, put on a festival after successfully coming back from a mission. Uh, during said celebration, they are, however, ambushed by a rivaling tribe, and their leader is subsequently killed. Um, afterwards, the tribe puts on funeral rites to mourn the headmingers death, and after the two tribes come together to form so a type of peace or coalition in order to put aside their differences, and they all dance in celebration afterwards. So my boys out there, I know you guys have been working really hard. I see it every day at practice. Every time afterwards, I see you looking at me to see, you know, did we do it good? I just want, I just want to let you know to put your heart out there on stage. Um, you know, give it all you got. No regrets. Leave it all there. You know, put on the performance of your life. Mm. To my, to my girls, my potheads, don't take that literally, please. But yeah, I'm really proud of you guys. You guys have progressed so much. I was honestly really scared for this feat because. I, I personally find this suite very hard, but you guys push through, especially for half of you being first timers. You guys are amazing. You guys are very graceful, and I see you grow every single day. All right, go for it. Traditional suite is basically about storytelling, a lot of Philippine folklore. Um, it dates back to a lot of like mythical creatures, uh, spirits, good or bad. Um, the suite is a is basically an epic. And I feel like this year we were given the opportunity to uh, make something great. And with that, we our dance this year is actually called Malakas of Maganda. And uh, what that is, is actually Philippines creation story. So the first man and woman. So a summary of the story is um, a bird flew around the world with, uh, when it was just water. And uh, since it ruptured the sea, it created land. And uh, from that, plants, from that, bamboo. And from the bamboo, the first man. PSN is important to me because of the, the bond I create with a lot of the people here, and it's uh, a chance for us to show something. You know, a lot of us put our effort in, and we get to show to a lot of our friends and family. Well, swing dancing originated around the big band era in the 1940s, and Manila swing is basically a branch of that that developed in the Philippines. Swing is just a very like fun improvisational partner dance. Yeah. Uh, it's just it's just fun to, to do, and yeah. it's like very um, energetic, and like you know there's stunts involved. Uh, yeah. It's a fun partner dance too. It, it's an opportunity for us to show our culture, because um, like you know you don't get a lot of opportunities to do that outside of college. Yeah. So it, it's just really cool to see a bunch of like you know college students coming together and like putting putting on a show that just emphasizes you know, our, our culture. PACN is important to me because it's where I met a lot of my friends and people who I consider family, like Adrian. Um, <laughs> and it's just, it's a, it was a great experience um, in college and I, I think everyone should take part in it. I wasn't gonna coordinate this year until I heard they were like, oh, we need someone to do swing. And I was like, oh my gosh, <laughs> uh, they're wrangling me back into this. So um, honestly, though, I, I don't regret it. 
Okay, so the Mindanao Street has several names. Um, besides the Mindanao Street, it's also known as the Muslim Street because it represents the Mindanao region and also it represents um, the Muslim region, or basically the Muslim peoples of culture and dances. Um, the Muslim people are actually the largest cultural minority besides Catholicism. It's around, it represents around 11 to 20 percent of Filipinos in the, in the country. Um, the Mindanao Street has several like unique traits about it, such as um, the royalty, um, the beauty of it, and also its elegant and shimmering um, costumes. And also, um, it's really supported with um, upbeat and energetic um, gongs and drums. So, Kinny Kinny is the royalty walk for uh, the young women. So, it's basically a debut to the prince. So, usually the prince watches them um, dance it, and it shows off the ladies' um, elegance, and it shows how good their upbringing was, basically. And I am coordinating the Brom Talo dance. Brom Talo is a dance that is mixed with martial arts elements and it's brought from the people of the Tosog tribe. Um, Brom Talo is a story. It shows a fight between a hawk and a cat. Well, I decided to coordinate this year because um, I coordinated last year and I felt like I could have changed some things. And to just um, basically better myself and also better the whole suite. For me, this is my first time coordinating a suite. Um, being a dancer the past two years, it's definitely a different perspective. And I like to see, the, I like, would love to um, be able to teach um, our um, members who are dancing um, because um, being a dancer and learning from these people and learning about our cultures and our dancers was really fun and important. So I would like to give back to the club by being able to instruct slash um, do choreography and teach these um, people in the street about what Mindanao is all about. Uh, I think that it brings out the cultural side of Filipino Americans and I know how um, Americanized some of us are and this just brings us all back to our roots. Me, or, yeah. Yeah, for me, he stands supporting me because growing up as a Phil Am, um, my parents really did not want to teach or did not really show the cultural side to slash the history of the Philippines to me. So learning like pretty much everything I knew about my culture and the history of the Philippines and like what our ancestors did were basically through PNC. And I think it's important to know like where you're from. Um, definitely know like how our culture has affected us in, in sort, sort of ways to who you are now. Um, culture affects a lot of things that we do. Um, it, is the reason why you're named a certain way. It's the reason why you eat certain foods. So it's it's fun to like learn more about your history, especially if you never knew about it yourself. For our Mindanao dancers, um, I know we've been hard on you, both Kenny Kenny and Bronatello, but I want to say we are your number one supporters. Like we know how much hard work you put into not just the stance, this suite, but all the other suites. But we would love the we love that you came um, and joined our dances because it was definitely a struggle throughout these past few months. But I want to say I love you guys and girls, and uh, you guys are going to kill on stage. So I'm coordinating this year because honestly I have some of my best memories in Barcado through PACN season. I made some of the bestest friends and I even found a family through it. I'm coordinating world this year because I really love the suite. I've been doing this ever since my first year, doing all the gigs, doing tangling, uh, stay out, and I can't be happier than so, Benisuan translates to dance with the drinking glass. It's mostly an all-lady performance, can be performed with guys. Um, they balance a glass with the rice wine on their heads as well as their hands. And they do a lot of stunts, a lot of, a lot of different dances, such as rolling on the floor. It's very graceful and it's usually danced at festivals and weddings. Uh, Sayah Sabanko translates to uh, roughly dancing on top of the bench. Uh, what it is, is that dancers use their skills and balance on top of the bench, like what we're sitting on right now, and not necessarily competing against each other, but they are complementing 